right, welcome everybody to the April uh, City of Franklin Municipal Planning Commission meeting. I appreciate everybody being here. We will start our meeting with the minutes from our March uh, meeting. If I could get a motion. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All right, seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if there's items that are not on tonight's agenda that you'd like to speak to the commission about, please come forward to the podium. If not, we'll move on in the agenda. All right, I see no movement, so we'll move on to announcements. Staff? <coughs> have a one quick announcement you should have gotten an email this week regarding a special joint conceptual workshop related to the draft zoning ordinance that's going to be released in May um, that date is currently for the joint workshop is set for noon to 4 on June 19th at Eastern Flank Battlefield it is a little far out still so we'll let you know if there's any changes but please go ahead and mark your calendars for that. <coughs> and then I did also, getting into the agenda, have one announcement that item um, 38, Carruthers Crossing West Development Plan, has requested deferral to the May 23rd meeting, and that can be added to the <coughs> consent agenda. Okay, thank you. All right, speaking, well, first of all, are there any items that someone wants to bring to the commission that's not on tonight's agenda to add to the agenda? We'll consider that now. All right, no last minute ads, and we will move on to our consent agenda. Uh, these are items that are considered non controversial that we'll vote on all in one block. Um, those items tonight are items 2 through 27, 39 through 43. So if you're here and you'd like to pull an item off that, that agenda, uh, please let me know either in the audience, um, staff, or the commission. Uh, if, if you would like to add 38, um, then we can add that to the consent. Mm -hmm. I move to add 38 to the consent agenda as a deferral to the May Planning Commission meeting. Okay. Do you want to also, oh, hold on for the second, you want to also include the other items that are being considered? <clears throat> yes. As part of that motion? Yes, I do. Okay. Is there a second no, to that? Second. All right. Moved and seconded. Uh, any discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. So that moves us to item number 28. <clears throat> so before we get started, I want to settle a, a couple of ground rules since we've got a couple of visitors tonight. Thanks for being here. Um, sometimes we have this many, sometimes we have two. So it's nice to see some interested uh, citizens. <clears throat> so for, for tonight, uh, on each of these agenda items, you're welcome to, um, to come when I announce that there are open uh, comments from the audience. We'll, uh, we'll entertain uh, comments from the audience two minutes apiece. I'd like to keep the uh, comments to two minutes or less. And if you'll uh, come forward and state your name and where you live so we know who you are and, and where you're coming from. Um, and then um, um, we'll have the applicant after all the uh, public comments uh, as part of that. Also, if you have heard two or three people or four people in front of you say the same thing you were going to say, don't feel like you have to say it a fifth or sixth or seventh time. We, um, I don't know how many college degrees we have here, but we do have some smart folks up here that get it when we uh, hear those comments. So um, we welcome your comments. We'd love to hear it, but uh, please do keep it civil. If, uh, if you feel like you don't want to be civil, then we'll ask you to leave. So uh, let's, uh, let's be civil. We're... We're trying to conduct uh, the city's business here and just need you guys to, to uh, be kind with us and we'll, we'll listen to what you say. So I'm going to start with agenda item number 28, consideration of resolution 2019-21, a resolution adopting a plan of service for the annexation of the Bennett property, Refuge Center PUD, consisting of approximately seven acres, located on Long Lane, south of Long Lane, and adjoining the city limits east of Williamson County Ag Center. Staff? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> this resolution is a City of Franklin drafted plan of service for the property being considered as part of the Refuge Center Development Plan. 
Plan of Services outlines how infrastructure will need to be provided to serve the pro proposed <coughs> annex property of 6.99 acres. The property is contiguous to the limits in the southeast quadrant along the western property line of this parcel. The property is adjacent to the Williamson County Agricultural Expo Center. This property is within regional commerce design concept in Envision Franklin, and the applicant's desire to develop this property as a limited office use would be supported by Envision Franklin. Therefore, staff recommends approval to the Board of Mayor and Alder Alderman <coughs> for the plan of service. Okay, thank you. That is critical uh, on this. That we, we have three items on this particular item. First one we're talking about is a plan of service, discussing how sewer, water, et cetera, will be provided for this site. It's not specifically talking about the refuge center. Um, generally it is, but not specifically. We'll get into that in item number 30. Item 29 is also a discussion about annexation. So uh, you're welcome to have comments. I, I would just ask that um, you consider that when you're giving your comments for us as we're initially considering plan of service, annexation, and then a development plan. <clears throat> so I will open that up to the audience. Anybody that wants to come forward, if you'll please line up at the podium, uh, we'll be glad to hear your comments. Go ahead, come on over. So this is specific to the Yeah, this is water. sewer, water, gas, services for the project. <clears throat> I guess I'm going to speak to all three. I'm, a, I'm in support. My name is Steve Abernathy. I live at 152 Clyde Circle with my wife. Been there since uh, February of 2015. I support the refuge center being built at the Long Lane location, supporting all three of the items that are on here tonight. The Refuge Center will be a great neighbor for our neighborhood, for our community. <coughs> I've visited the existing facility several times to learn more about their objectives and their plans for the community. And based on that information, uh, I and several of the neighbors in Lad Park feel that uh, the lo locating this Refuge Center at this site would be good for our neighborhood and be a positive benefit. Some of my neighbors do have concerns. However, after careful review of those concerns, Looking at the proposed development plans for the Long Lane overpass, as well as the uh, Carruthers Parkway and uh, Paytonsville Road connector. And finally, talking to the uh, architect, J.C. Elder, for the project and seeing all the things that are going to be done to make it neighborhood friendly and to conform with what's going to be already there. Uh, I feel I do not share the concerns of those people that are in opposition. I believe a beautiful $6 million facility that conforms to the neighborhood design provides valuable counseling services that are needed in our community and keeps over half of the seven acres that are in the project in a pristine condition will ensure that Franklin and Ladd Park will continue to be a wonderful community we chose as our home. Again, in closing, I request the Planning Commission vote affirmative for these three, pro uh, three items up tonight and thank you for your service to the community. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm Joey Blakely, 4334 and 4338 Long Lane. I'm going to keep my comments specific to the sewer and the services aspect um, in the fact that I own those two pieces of property, that there are three sewer options that they have put in place for this potential annexation, and Part A runs directly between my two pieces of property. Uh, Part B runs between my father-in-law's property and our neighbor's property, um, and will require some easements to be able to do that. Part C does run. Um, down south on the south side of a long lane through some of the property that's on the other end, but it's a 2,500 foot run to be able to reach the basin there. Uh, this particular property in, in, in general does not meet the overall plan of services or the long-term plan for sewer on long lane, which is to have all that sewer serviced on the other side of the, of the, of the street. When you look at the master plan for the city of Franklin, it doesn't necessarily meet that. Um, the neighbors in the area all have signed an agreement saying that we are not going to provide any temporary or permanent easements for the annexation or the building of this property, which doesn't necessarily mean you guys can't do it. We know pretty much you guys can do whatever you want to do. But that being said, we just know that the folks who are looking to purchase this property are going to be in a position where it's going to be difficult for them. And I think everybody in this room has a, a reason to appreciate what's being done by the refuge. We're just trying to make sure that it's not going to be something that's going to be super costly to them. The reason we want to put it out that way is we have a lot on the line. Our property values are on the line. You guys are basically horseshoeing in an area that's surrounded by homes and putting a commercial piece of property in there. 
And, um, you know, when it gets right down to it, we're talking about two and a half million dollars between five different residences that could be pretty strongly affected in property value. And we just don't believe that's the right thing to do to citizens in the county or the city of Franklin. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> of course, there was one thing I forgot to mention. <laughs> Uh, we're not a we're not a sporting event. We're not the draft. We appreciate no um, outbursts, please. Uh, we're we're trying again to conduct uh, business of the city. Any other comments? Okay, then uh, do I have a motion? Applicant. Oh, I'm sorry. Applicant. <laughs> See what y'all did? <laughs> Got me off my routine. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Greg Gamble, representing the applicant, the Refuge Center. I uh, appreciate this opportunity to talk with you tonight. In front of you is a packet. It's an eight and a half by 11 packet. If you flip to the very last page in this packet, this will show you uh, the three sewer options for the property. Option C <coughs> follows the City of Franklin's Engineering Department master plan for sewering this property. It's longer than option A and option B. It costs more than option A and op option B. It's not cost prohibitive, it costs more. We have talked to those property owners. They are willing to work with the Refuge Center to provide sewer. The sewer manhole is um, uh, right on Long Lane at the Moss property PUD. So we didn't want to simply abandon uh, the opportunities that we might have to connect with option A and option B. But option C is a real and a viable um, uh, sewer um, route for the refuge center. It, like I said, it does cost more. That's why it's number C. But um, uh, we, don't, we do not have any objection with the plan of services. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. All right, thank you. <clears throat> okay, I'll now entertain a motion. Move for approval. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All right. Yes, I Go ahead, Ann. I could ask one question. Um, I know that the city can uh, condemn property to uh, put in infrastructure. Is it the, un the understanding then that this project would not request A or B, options A or B for the sewer? <clears throat> would you like the applicant to ask, answer that? We have looked at plats at this point. We've looked at property lines. We've looked at the topography and we know that those are gravity uh, options. We've not specifically talked to or addressed the uh, acquisition of easements with the neighbors. I believe you heard the neighbor previously say that he has and so that may be a closed door for us. But we have not specifically requested or offered money for the purchase of an easement at this time, not until the property is acquired. <clears throat> okay, any other discussion? All right, seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Okay. Motion passes. We'll move to item number 29, consideration of resolution 2019-30, a resolution to annex the property along Long Lane, Refuge Center PUD, consisting of seven acres uh, south of Long Lane and east of the Ag Center staff. Thank you. As said before, the site proposed to be annexed is 6.99 <coughs> acres and adjacent to the city of Franklin's southeastern boundary, immediately east of the Williamson County Agricultural Center. The property is within the city's urban growth boundary and designated in Envision Franklin as appropriate for regional commerce uses. A separate zoning request and development plan will follow this annexation request and the associated development proposed in this location is the Refuge Center Counseling Office. Staff recommends approval to the Board of Mayor and Alderman for this annexation. Okay. Again, we're talking about annexation this time. If you'd like to come forward, please, please do. <clears throat> Hi, good evening. My name is Michelle Sutton. I live at 316 Irvine Lane um, in Ladd Park. Um, my property is about 300 feet from the proposed site. Um, a, Envision Franklin has been mentioned a couple of times um, during this discussion, and it's my concern that it was overlaid regional commerce on top of people's current homes. Um, it's my understanding that Envision Franklin is also um, a working document. 
It's something that can be looked at, something that can be changed, something that can be discussed. Um, I'm just really concerned that there's probably other properties around Franklin that are that were rezoned um, and that we're using Envision Franklin almost as a Bible and we're not looking at the overall picture and that you've got 500 to a million dollar homes that are sitting in a regional commerce zone right now. To me that doesn't make sense and I really ask that you guys think about that and what that's doing to people's properties, to their property value, and to their daily lives. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Joey Blakely, 4334-4338 Long Lane again. I want to dovetail off of what Michelle just said and I just want to echo the comments of Ann at one of the BOMA meetings where she had um, admittedly said that this property should have never been overlaid through Envision Franklin and since she is one of your board members or um, and that she has a lot to do and you all have had a lot to do with the production of Envision Franklin we know 176 pages doesn't come together without a lot of really really hard work but we just want to make the notion that maybe a mistake was made here and again I know that's ghastly to think but um, these properties are actually all single-family homes it's it's labeled differently on some of those maps that I put in front of you guys. Um, the other thing I want to make clear within some of the handouts that I gave are that, you know, this land in particular is, is rated on a scale of one to five as a two to be able to be built on. Um, and the other um, parcels that are within this subdivision that is now sitting within the, the county, uh, a residentially zoned subdivision, these other parcels are also equally as um, inundated with conservation trees and area that's going to make it a little bit more prohibitive for those folks to recoup any of their money if this needs to be sold as commercial property somewhere down the road. So um, again, just want to push that out there and we really do feel a discussion needs to be had on this particular overlay within Envision Franklin and we would appreciate the board doing so. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Greg Ross. I'm at 4321 Long Lane. I am on this map. Right here is where I live. This is the subdivision that I live in. It was subdivided in 1997. Just so that you can all get an idea of what's going on. And I come to you tonight in deep hope that you will cons to reconsider the annexation and commercial rezoning of a lot off of Long Lane into the city of Franklin. While the project at hand sounds like a very worthy cause, I would argue that the location is unequivocally inappropriate for the following reasons. You should be aware of the fact that in the immediate area, there are several subdivisions. There's mine, there's the one directly across this Long Lane, where the uh, red kind of goes around it. There's Ladd Park, there's different sections of Ladd Park. You could see a lot of it on that map. And I have heard a lot of discussion about this fallacy that this particular lot is outside of the city and in a barren part of the county with nothing but farmland and cows. But this is simply not the case. This seven acre parcel to be annexed is located at the end of the subdivision that I live in, a subdivision that includes five parcels with luxury homes on them. We have covenants and deed restrictions, just as you would expect to find in a subdivision of smaller lots like Ladd Park. It should also be noted that the proposed entrance is dangerously close to the peak of a very steep hill, making it a perfect storm for the potential of fatal accidents. Even with installation of warning signs or lights, a very real threat exists with drivers who choose to ignore or aren't paying close enough attention as I frequently see driving myself. Can you please wrap up your comment, sir? Y yes, sir. Or for the, okay. Last, I just would like to say I would ask that you please seriously consider the negative impact and const of constructing a 15,200 square foot commercial building on a lot in the middle of our subdivision and it would have an impact on our property values. We have spoken to several realtors in the area and they are in agreement that it would greatly reduce our home values. 
and I highly doubt that the city would put an overlay of commerce on a part of Ladd Park, yet this is exactly what is happening in our area. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Good evening. I'm Dwayne Allison, uh, and I own Track 4. I'm Greg's neighbor just to the south, uh, <coughs> less than 100 yards from the proposed uh, annex uh, property. Uh, I'm one of the um, original uh, home uh, buyers, land buyers there in the subdivision in 1997-98. And um, I would echo everything that Greg just said. Uh, I'd like to add just a couple other uh, qualitative uh, but uh, very potentially impactful uh, factors. We have a, um, on our property, about 10 acres, uh, wooded property, and uh, we have uh, had for years a uh, private shooting range over there. I don't know if the refuges are aware of this, but I don't know how uh, peaceful that might be for their, their patrons. But the more, in, uh, more important concern would be, if I uh, understand there's uh, proposed walk, uh, trails up the side of the hill on their property. If children, adults, seniors uh, should wander off uh, and it's not far to our property, that uh, it could be you know, catastrophic. So we, you know, we can legally operate our own shooting range there, being in the county and so forth. So uh, I just want to ex express that concern as well. Thank you for having us here, and I would, I would uh, ask that you would oppose this resolution. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Sarah Eichelman, I live at 447 Fenhorse Lane in Ladd Park <clears throat> in the Carruthers Cove section that backs up to Long Lane. And I would ask that you actually support the annexation. Um, I have lived in Ladd Park for almost five years, and it's a wonderful community. Um, great neighbors, and that's why, to me, some of the opposition to this has been stunning, and some of the um, way neighbors are treating each other over this has been stunning to me. Um, it's inevitable that there's going to be annexation and that there's going to be commercial development. We have a truck stop down the street. We have a Goose Creek motel that's abandoned. Those are the things that I worry about impacting my property value. It's not... Um, a wilderness-like type lodge that's going to be across the street from our neighborhood that's surrounded by walking paths and trees with appropriate lighting uh, mandated by the city. So um, this also, I feel a lot of the discussion around this, regardless of the annexation, is increasing <coughs> um, the stigma that's already surrounding mental health issues when a lot of our neighbors themselves have dealt with significant issues, lost children to suicide, things like that. And so um, in this instance, I feel like our neighborhood alone could benefit <coughs> from having services so close um, to our neighborhood. So I ask that you support this annexation. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Carl Roberts, and I live at 1202 Scramblers Knob. I own a home in Echelon, which is just north of Ladd Park. My son and his family live on Ben Horse Lane and I am a past board member for the Refuge Center for Counseling. So I have multiple interests in this particular pros project. I'd like to clear up a few issues that have been raised by the opposition. First, there's much talk about property values decreasing as a result of the Refuge Center being built on this site. A literature review by a doctoral student, John Matthews at Georgia State University, was quite extensive and looked at 16 different properties. This is what he found. Five, and, and this is commercial properties as their impact on residential properties. Five showed a positive impact. Two found a negative impact. Five saw no effect either way. The other four had other factors that impacted the particular value of the properties. Secondly, we have uh, been in forest crossings for about eight years and we have not seen a decrease in property values in that particular location. Third, the Refuge Center building will be a large lodge type facility that will fit into the neighborhood. The architects and landscaping are specifically addressing those issues. Much of the property will be maintained in its natural state and wildlife and the environment will be protected. Secondly, there's a rumor that crime will increase. We have seen no crime increase in our present location. There's been no crime in 
uh, the Refuge Center facility. And finally, a study which was cited as their evidence that crime would increase was actually done in inner city Chicago. We are hardly inner city Chicago. And that study found that it was restaurants, bars, and liquor stores that resulted in the crime that were open between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. I don't think any of our counselors will be counseling between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. Finally, your comments, sir? I have one, one more point. Finally, I personally have looked at 40 different properties between Concord Road and Goose Creek Bypass within that corridor. We have found one property that meets our needs, and that is Long Lane. The property that is continually thrown out as meeting that need is too small, has surface rock, and is, is not uh, conducive to our particular needs. So thank you for, okay. thank you for supporting thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening. My name is Eric Baer, uh, 701 Meeting Street in the Founder Point neighborhood, just west of Franklin. Uh, the opportunity to make this city, county, community, and state an even better place to live is in our hands. A decision to annex the property along Long Lane will facilitate that opportunity. As Williamson County residents, we recognize that change is the only constant thing in our growing and expanding community. We can embrace this ceaseless change or we can try to avoid it and let it impact us without our input. As we consider this particular change, I recognize there are detractors to the proposed annexation of the property along Lane, along Long Lane specifically some residents of and around the Ladd Park neighborhood. I respect and appreciate their position on this subject, and what I'm most excited about is their passion about their neighborhood and community. As a supporter of the Refuge Center for Counseling, I see the passion of the detractors as an important part of our future together. Similar to Saul's transformation on the road to Damascus, these current opponents will eventually become the most ardent supporters of the Refuge Center for Counseling. As with Saul, there will be a point of embrace when it becomes clear to the that this facility and organization will make the neighborhood and community exponentially better. I recognize this path forward is one of many paths toward excellence for our city. There are alternatives. For the Refuge Center, we've reviewed and analyzed these alternatives, and at this point, annexation and rezoning is the best path forward for us and the resulting benefit to the community. Regarding alternatives, in the broader sense, the opposition of the opponents of annexation should consider their options as well. Uh, moving forward with a known entity as a neighbor is a wonderful opportunity. Welcoming a kind, compassionate, willing, supportive, and healthy neighbor to the community is available to us now. Alternatively, attempting to disallow the neighbor in the near term introduces a possibility of numerous unknowns in the future. The possi possibility of contending with businesses looking to build and expand into the area could be far more agonizing than the current anxiety regarding the Refuge Center for Counseling. Looking years into the future, I'll wrap up with this last thought. Looking years into the future, the inevitable in annexation and expansion of this and surrounding areas will provide opportunities for a multitude of businesses and organizations to propose far more disrupting and disturbing options for this land. So I would ask that you support the annexation such that the Refuge Center for Counseling can move forward with its plans for expansion, continue to make this city, county, state a better place to live. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Julie Vaughn Abernathy, and I live at 152 Clyde Circle in Ladd Park, and I do support the refuge. I think a lot of the problem is people's concern with change. I have been concerned with change most of my life. I have probably seen more change in this town than most anyone in this room, if not anyone in this room. I was born at Dan German Hospital, and have been a resident of Franklin. And this is my town and I love it. While change comes, whether sometimes you want it or not, I think it will be in our best interest to have a neighbor, someone that wants to serve people rather than worried about making a dollar. My brother picked up hay off of Ladd Park when he was a kid in the summers. My dad and Mr. Ladd graduated high school together. So this is my town, 
and it hurts me to see people, the dissension, I just want us to pull together. And if it hadn't been for the vision of planning commissions and mayors and aldermen, Franklin wouldn't be this quaint little town where everyone wants to live. Everybody would say, we'll stay away. But because of the change, it's pulled in people. So I just want you to know I support the refuge, and I think they would be a great neighbor. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm Anita Pringle. I live at 3085 Commonwealth Drive in Spring Hill. I'm the clinical director of the Refuge Center. I support the Refuge Center, its mission, vision, staff, and clients. I attended the joint conceptual workshop with the Planning Commission and Board of Mayor and Aldermen. It was clear in that meeting that many of you agreed that the property should be zoned General Office PUD to establish more control for the city in this location. This is exactly what the Refuge Center has provided and we stand behind our commitments. We are seeking a PUD overlay which restricts present and future uses and gives the control of future plans to the Alderman and the Planning Commission. Also, after reading through Envision Franklin, the city's long range plan clearly supports development at greater intensities than what is being proposed. The policy in this area would support a six story building. We are proposing the development of a building that is far less than this. The proposal is sensitive to the neighbors with its residential style building, proposed buffers, and screening. It does fit. This is a low intensity development that will have very little impact on the area and fits on the Long Lane Corridor. I would ask that the Planning Commission vote for approval. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Pike Williams. Uh, I'm one of the staff therapists at the Refuge Center. I live at 518 Hope Avenue. Uh, there in Franklin, I maintain a private practice in Franklin, uh, where my family and I have lived now for almost 20 years. Um, I've been at the Refuge Center since May of 2013, following my internship there. And um, I believe that um, this property is, is a fabulous fit for our needs. I had a chance to walk the property uh, about five or six months ago. And I think it's a great fit for the Refuge Center and our mission because the mission of refuge is really this, to provide excellent and affordable professional counseling services in order to educate, empower, and support individuals, couples, and families in need. The property at Long Lane is uh, a great fit for our mission. It provides a tranquil and peaceful and private place. You know, many of our clients, when they come in, they comment on how great it is to be able to step away from the crazy pace of our lives. Everyone in this room is aware of that. And so in a very therapeutic way to have a space that is tranquil and, and that feels secure and private sets up a place for healing and significant work to occur. And so this is a great property for that. And I'm, I'd like to just say in closing that I want to express my appreciation to all of you for the hard work you do and the work in the city and the area that we, in the county that we live in. I appreciate that. And I would just like to ask uh, for your vote for approval of the annexation. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Good evening. My name is Amy Alexander, and I am the executive director and co-founder of the Refuge Center. And I live at 3846 Somers Lane in Thompson Station. Uh, the Refuge Center is a Christ-centered, nonprofit group of professional counselors. The Refuge Center is a critically important organization for such a time as this. The city and the county have identified mental health as an important issue that needs to be addressed. And the Refuge Center exists to provide this help to all people. This project will only enhance our ability to continue to have positive impacts in this county. We have served over 3,000 individuals in just this past year alone. And we believe that when a family gets better, a community is better. 
There are many people here tonight in support of this project who won't have a chance to speak. If I may, if you are in support of this project, will you just lift a hand? Thank you. I would also ask that the Planning Commission vote to approve our project. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> Hi there. Uh, my name is Jennifer Thames Gillette. I'm the co-founder of the Refuge Center for Counseling. Um, and I live at 1024 Rochelle Avenue in Thompson Station. Um, and statistically speaking, each person in this room knows people with issues. And I, I mean, I could come up with a list right now. Um, and that's what we do. We help people, whether it's mental health issues, relational issues, grief issues, anything. We are the people who are there to serve um, and help people to live their best life, to learn what it is to be fully alive and fully engaged in their lives. And, um, and it's beautiful and life-changing work. And we have believed from the beginning that if we can impact one person, then we can impact a family. If we can impact one family, then we can impact a neighborhood. And if we can impact a neighborhood, we can impact our entire uh, community, our city, and our county. At Refuge, we are currently leasing, and we need a permanent home. Because of our excellent work, our referrals are constant, and our reputation is solid, and we're looking for a permanent home. And our design considers our maximum build-out. So there will no be, not be any addition in the future to what we have planned now. Um, this is considering maximum build-out. If many, many, many years down the road we exceed this, um, we will start this process again and look for land and a new location again. So um, that has been a presented concern several times that we will build on to what we currently have. That is not what we're factoring in. As a board, we have agreed this is what we can manage and this is what we will be doing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm Michael Bennett. I live at 2076. Uh, scenic Gulf Tribe, Miramar Beach, Florida. My wife and I are the owners of that seven acre piece of property on Long Lane. Uh, although we stand to, in fact, benefit from it financially with the sale, I can assure you that we have been offered considerably more uh, than the current negotiated price with the Refuge Center because of one reason. Uh, we're trying to give back to the community that we were part and party to for 30 years here. Uh, we came with Saturn in, uh, shortly after its announcement in 1985, and uh, we've lived off Nolensville Road. We purchased the property in 1997 and built the house there. And uh, shortly thereafter, I think in 2005, we sold the property uh, to the uh, Baptist Community Church, uh, which was the pastor was uh, Mr. Ross at that time. He had uh, also requested that we, in fact, include in that sale price uh, an option to purchase the seven acres so that he might someday build a significant and meaningful church on that property in the process. So I can tell you also that, uh, that I've been involved, and my wife and I have been involved in the community for the 30 years that we lived here, as 11 years as CASA members in support of their program, a court appointed special advocate for abused children, uh, Special Olympics. I served on the board of directors for, in fact, uh, the region, uh, Cumberland region tomorrow. Uh, Economic Development Corporation and was a member of the board of directors for the Nashville uh, Federal Reserve Board in this process. So I've seen development over these 30 years and I can assure you uh, I have not found one person yet who has in fact been part and party to losing money as a result of the growth, the tremendous amount of growth that's occurred in this region uh, over these last 30 years in the process. I do want to say that we do support uh, the uh, Refuge Center annexation vote uh, for those very reasons about giving back to the community that we so much appreciate and giving to us when we first came here in this process. So I would ask that you in fact consider that in your deliberations and, uh, and please uh, vote yes for annexation. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hi, my name is Madeline Shore, and I'm the Assistant Clinical Director at the Refuge Center, and I live on 4225 Harding Pike in Nashville, and I'm here to voice my support for the Refuge Center. We have heard concerns that Long Lane may present safety issues for cars entering and exiting the Refuge Center. 
Due to these concerns, the Refuge Center paid for a traffic study, which was not required. The City of Franklin and its third party traffic engineer reviewed the study. The study found that the proposed building and its use will have negligible impacts on Long Lane and no improvements were required. However, the Refuge Center at its own discretion is including a turn lane to address the safety concerns expressed by the neighbors. I request the Planning Commission vote for approval. Good evening, my name is Kristen Patel. I'm a 10 year uh, Williamson County resident. I live at 1235 Concord Hunt Drive. Um, I've been part of the Refuge Center for two years, often as a point of first contact for many of our clients, helping with intake assessments and scheduling. Everyday people just like you and me call and come through our doors. Why? Simply because life happens and life can be complicated and life can be messy. It has been one of my greatest honors to have others share just a small part of their story with me. I don't believe in coincidences, so it's no coincidence that the Refuge Center finally found this particular piece of land that will offer the type of healing our, our clients need. It's a holistic healing of the mind, body, and spirit the other pieces of property could not offer. Every detail has been meticulously thought through on this property. 60% of the land will basically remain untouched, offering serene walking and hiking trails to to all, um, I found three recent studies published in psychology journals, all stating the same thing that just a 20 minute nature experience would does and significant will significantly reduce cortisol levels. And this means, um, if you're wondering, you don't even have to exercise. Um, in a way, this makes total sense because it's in nature where so many of us feel closest to God. I have seen it with my own eyes, how many people refuge has healed through our doors. Who knows the level of healing that can be achieved on this land once the outdoor dreams are realized as well. We truly never know when we will need or someone we know and love will need these services that we have to offer. So please say yes to the annexation of um, the Refuge Center at Long Lane. It will no doubt become a sacred and healing space for our entire community. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jenna Elrod, and I am a resident of Nashville, um, but I am one of the contract therapists at Refuge. Um, I was first introduced to Refuge right out of college. I had lost two of my close friends in accidents, um, and I just needed a place to heal, but I also needed a place that was affordable. And so I had recommendations from friends um, to go there as a place of healing. Um, and through that time there, I was able to heal and went on to get my master's in marriage and family therapy. Um, and I knew that years later, I wanted to go back to Refuge, that place that had been my place of healing, um, and to be able to offer those services to um, other people in need. So I have served as um, a volunteer and also as an employee. Um, and so as those different roles as client, volunteer, and employee, I've been treated with respect um, and I have um, been in a place of hope and healing. Um, and so I just wanna let you guys know that as um, the role of neighbors that we will continue to honor that and to be a place of healing and respect and intentionality. Um, so I hope that you guys will also be um, in support of um, the annexation for refuge. Thank you. Hello, I'm Lisa Prysock Allen, a resident of Brindley Crossing in Ladd Park. My residence is 312 Godfrey Court. Post-college, I promptly moved to Nashville and have been a resident of Tennessee for 29 years. <coughs> Additionally, I'm a business owner in the entertainment business. My company employs over 30 people. A few years back, I received my master's in marriage and family therapy. As part of the program, I was chosen to complete my post, my pre-degree hours at the Refuge Center for Counseling and spent a year as a practicum therapist at the Refuge Center. Additionally, I joined the board of directors for a time period. My love for Amy and the work that the Refuge Center does is very strong. My time there was life-changing, as is for many employees who, um, as is for many of my employees who also see therapists at the Refuge Center. 
As exciting as growth is in our region, I, like many of my neighbors and others in this room, am concerned about the value of my home in Ladd Park. With so many new residents coming to our area, so does the opportunity and the need for good community support. Counseling and group therapy has a variety of benefits to our neighbors. As a nonprofit neighbor, specifically the Refuge Center, would be a great candidate for this property. Not only would it provide solid services to the residents, but the site plan and architectural plans for the building would be a welcome fit to the aesthetics of our area. I hope that those that lack understanding about the Refuge Center seeks more information and explore the park-like setting that is preserved in the plans, as well as the non-intrusive nature of the hours the Counseling Center is open. I hope that you vote yes to annex the property and allow the Refuge Center to become a part of our wonderful little nook in Williamson County. Hello, my name is Shelley Moeller. I live at 4655 Harpeth Paytonsville Road in Thompson Station. I support the Refuge Center. I had the opportunity to attend an economic summit yesterday for Williamson <coughs> County and the focus was on the local economy. And it was just interesting to learn that approximately 50% of the current Williamson County residents weren't born here. They were born outside of Tennessee. Our population has grown by 27% over the last eight years and is expected to more than double by the year 2040. More than 2,200 new business licenses were filed this year alone. We moved to the country setting just outside of Franklin 20 years ago. We had cattle for neighbors, and as much as I'd love our area to remain the same, it was 20 years ago, and that's not realistic. So in the light of growth, and, and we expect the future to grow in our, in our county, the proposed refuge center would make a great neighbor in any community. It is an organization that brings tremendous value and support to our community and asks for little in return. I request the Planning Commission vote for approval of the refuge center. Thank you. My name is Ken Davis, and I am a client of the Refuge Center. I wanted you to see a face of someone who will not rob you, who will not come at night. I'm 72 years old. I can't run. Uh, <laughs> I, I, just, I just want you to know that the attitude of the Refuge Center from beginning to end is a lifesaver and a life giver and, and helper to so many people. I wish you could hear some of the discussions they have about some of the problems that are going on here and their attitudes um, are those of people who just want to be good neighbors. Having worked with troubled youth as a young person, I know one thing, that either you catch it early or you pay for it later. And so I am a, I am a proponent of the Refuge Center. I feel, um, I feel a concern for some of your concerns, but I, I would hope that you vote for this because I think it will be good for the entire community. I'm J. Edward Campbell, um, 1809 Turning Well Lane, Franklin, Tennessee. Um, I've been a resident of Franklin since 1976. I come tonight to support the Refuge Center. Life happens. 21 years ago, I attempted suicide. I found myself at the Williamson Medical Center surrounded by caring professional individuals, angels who saw me through the night and who got me into counseling, and I'm standing here today. So I support counseling and the Refuge Center. Uh, there have been things mentioned, and one of the things mentioned was privacy. At the very beginning of our property search as a board, we set a goal to find a property that will offer seclusion and privacy for the clients and those who come to the Refuge Center. The whole premise of the Refuge Center is to offer a retreat from the chaos of life when life happens. This property is large. It allows us the opportunity to conceal the campus behind the trees. The building is set back well beyond the minimums that are required uh, of the zoning ordinances so that we can establish buffers adjacent to all of the neighbors and to protect the privacy of the campus and those who will visit the campus as clients. Existing tree lines on the property boundary will be protected and additional landscape will be added where needed. The parking lot will definitely be buffered from views along Long Lane and we intentionally have a low profile two-story residential style building that, we convey a, that will convey a secluded and welcoming presence. 
Again, it is counseling services. There will be no overnight stays in that building. It is not a place where it's an institution. It's a place where people will come for refuge. I would ask for you all to vote yes for the Refuge Center and thank you for your service to the city. Hello, my name is Nicole Smith and I have had the pleasure and the great privilege of being on the board for the Refuge Center for Counseling for more than eight years. Um, it is a place that I love and that I have a great passion for. I just wanna spend a few minutes um, telling you about the people of Refuge Center. Um, you've heard from so many people who support us tonight and I'm so glad you had the chance to hear from Ken, one of our clients. Um, I wanna tell you more about who those people are that we serve. I think there's been some misconceptions about who those people are and I wanna be sure that you know that they are mothers, they're fathers, they're children, they are community leaders, they are our neighbors, our colleagues, our friends, Ultimately, they are you and they are me. These people are our neighbors and we want to serve them in this location. Um, it is a safe and contemplative place where they can come and truly heal from the storms of their daily lives. Um, I just wanna be sure that we know the, who we're talking about here and they really are, they're me and you. So um, I hope that you will vote to um, approve the annexation of Longley. Thank you. Hello, um, my name is Karthi. I live in 1001 Rycroft Lane, Franklin. It's just a mile away from the refugee center, proposed refugee center. Um, I have two points to like uh, raise a concern. The first thing is, uh, I just want to say like a couple of weeks ago, uh, a kid, waiting for a bus, school bus has been shown gun, which is a threat for the kid, and we called the police, and we are, we still, we recovered, we didn't, kids are like not recovered out of that, like a, and this kind of refugee center, we are inviting more trouble, and I've gone through Google, there are, we're not complaining, all, everyone after coming to refugee centers are certain kind of people, like I don't want to mention any, any, any name, like I don't want to go against completely, but we are inventing all kind of people, all kind of people means you, you can understand what I'm talking about. So with this kind of uh, chaos, like uh, giving approval for a refugee center with a peaceful community next to like 1,100 people, 1,100 uh, families living in, which is like a highly risk, that's what I feel. That's why I came into, and I don't know how many people who are uh, supporting here for the refugee center, 90% um, are not living just a mile away. We are living just a mile away. And uh, you can see like, uh, if you ask the riser ants, uh, less than a mile, majority of the people lives a mile away from the refugee center. The second thing is, uh, I remember we are talking about the traffic. One of the, the previous annexation meetings member has said like uh, we are going to have uh, four lanes on the Carthus Road, and uh, all those things are future proposed. So are we going to look into future proposed for the current uh, planning, or are we going to pr build the infrastructure and going to pro provide a? So what is our plan? Like uh, we are looking at the future, not the current. So I, I request you guys vote against. Once we have the development, then we can provide refugee center. I'm not talking about refugee center, any development plan. It is going to be a business uh, center, that's I can about the center, but refugee center is not, not the right fit for the community next to us. Thank you. Hi, I'm Shashank and I stay in the same community as uh, he does and I stay like one, one mile away from the uh, proposed uh, plan of the refugee center. So uh, we understand that, I mean, this, uh, this kind of, uh, like a lot of people uh, need help, uh, like these refugee centers, but uh, you don't know, I mean, what, like what kind of people come in here. And uh, so that's what is actually worrying uh, a lot of us uh, who are staying there. So uh, the, f the first thing we want to talk is, uh, 
we, um, like places like these are supposed to be there, um, which will help a lot of people to get out of uh, the addictions and all, but not exactly right in the, uh, just besides the neighborhoods, but somewhere uh, outside uh, and uh, away from the neighborhoods or outside the town kind of. And uh, we are actually concerned about the safety of our families and uh, um, um, the, I mean, um, among the addicts and, uh, and all because we have learned uh, that these uh, 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 rehabilitation centers actually uh, they addict, sorry, they actually attract the dangerous outsiders and criminals to misuse uh, in the name of these rehabilitation centers. So we do not want to wake up in the middle of the night to some weird sounds and uh, some, to see some people walking uh, from nowhere and get scared. So we actually uh, are concerned mainly about the safety. And the second thing we are worried about is the property values. Uh, so we have bought uh, thinking that Franklin is the safest place and uh, it's a good place to stay at because we love the people staying uh, in and around there. So we are also worried about the property places. Uh, property prices might go down after this uh, rehabilitation centers will uh, come in. So we request you to uh, think twice before uh, 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 getting this approval. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, I live at 158 um, Hobbs Drive, Franklin, Tennessee. Uh, my name is Robert Malloy, and I've been in the community now three years. I served the uh, United States Army for 22 years, and so I appreciate the fact that the refugee refuge center um, and the mission that they do, and I actually support you in the mission that you do. And so it's important, though I stand here in opposition, my opposition is not with with what they provide. And, and I want that to be clear, and I think some of the residents here will also agree with you. But there's some things that have happened in the past three years that I've been here, and I've got to see the growth of, of Franklin, Tennessee, and I'm blessed to be a part of the community. And having served for 22 years and been all over the country, this is, this is home. And I make it my home, and so I wanted to be a part of the community. So I've met with Steve Abernathy um, in, in looking and in searching for an answer for me and my family and for the residents that live around me. And I think that's important to understand that I actually met with both sides of this. And though I really support what you do in your, in your mission and, and, and I applaud you for it, I spent the last 13 years doing health care in prisons and jails. 60% of our community are mental health patients and I think everybody in the audience would agree that that, that to be true. So I understand what the refuge does. My concern is not with that anymore. My concern now is with how Franklin is growing. And it's about the safety of our community. It's about the discovery center that is now going to be built right off of Carruthers. So we talk about traffic patterns and we talk about which way things move. You and I have all know that there's a way around everything. And unfortunately, that way around everything is gonna be right through Carruthers, whether we like it or not. Though the refuge may not have a large impact, the impact of the, all the traffic will ultimately impact our community. There'll be more accidents, there'll be, and, and we, we can't dismiss that all this is anecdotal. <coughs> Numbers are anecdotal. We won't know the impact until it happens. So I respectfully request that you take a look at that and how that those properties and all the other developments are actually going to affect our community so thank you very much for your time and I appreciate you all. Thanks. Thank you. My name is Ken Core. I'm the Congregational Care Minister at Brentwood Baptist Church. One of my responsibilities at the church is to provide referral services for people in our congregation and our community who are looking for health care. Quality mental health care that is affordable and that is Christ-centered is very hard to find in our community. One of the things that I've done for the last 11 years has been to refer people to the Refuge Center where I know they will get quality health care in an affordable, Christ-centered environment. These people are not in active psychosis. These people are not needing psychiatric uh, long-term care. These are people who are just like us sitting in the congregation every single Sunday and that you know in your community. One of the things that I, I think I would say to you is that I would support this 
because I think our community ser seriously needs more health care. It is difficult for me now when I'm sending people to the refuge center to get a call back to say, well, they can't take me because the waiting list is too long. This property will alleviate some of that need, and I strongly encourage you to vote yes for this annexation. Good evening. My name is Brian Dolshaw. I live at 560 St. John Place uh, here in Franklin. I'm actually a current neighbor of the Refuge Center, um, so I can speak to the property values as well as the crime. Uh, I bought my home 11 years ago in Forest Crossing. In, that, in the past 11 years, uh, my home value has nearly doubled. Uh, I've raised my children there, and uh, it frequently kids, my kids are riding through the neighborhood. Uh, we've not experienced any crime issues, any concerns as a result of the Refuge Center. I uh, also served on the um, HOA board for Forest Crossing for four years, in which we've never received any complaints about the Refuge Center or any concerns from the over 600 residents in Forest Crossing. So I, uh, I ask you to vote to approve this project. Thank you. Scott Myers, 4322 Long Lane. I'm going to be impacted. My family will be more than anybody here. I live directly across the um, entrance from the Refuge Center. Got a question. How many people support the Refuge Center in this room? Everybody support them? I support what they do. Gotcha. How many people are opposed to the Refuge Center? In that, in that area, yes. Okay. As far as that location is concerned, sorry. It doesn't make sense. Does it make sense for a blind drive coming over at the top of a blind hill to be a high volume business area? It doesn't make sense. I can't walk out to my mailbox during the day now because of traffic. What's it going to be like when they move in? In addition to that, I get to watch headlights in my uh, um, living room. I've got to put up with the traffic there. It doesn't make sense. They think it makes sense. It doesn't make sense. If anybody's been out to Long Lane recently, they'd know the blind drive. Come over the top of the hill, trucks, can't read that, can you? It's upside down. Trucks are doing, now, now it is upside down, so sorry, I'm nervous, I'm not a happy camper. <laughs> so coming over the top of the hill are 50, 55 mile an hour, 80,000 80, pound dump trucks full of gravel, head long to get down to where they're going to dump their load. Recently, I think the school bus was stopped, the traffic was backed up a little bit, a truck, dump truck, had to slam on their brakes. I don't know what happened, but you can see the skid marks here where it did occur. I think that's one of the reasons why Mr. Bennett has had such a hard time selling his profit, property is because it is very dangerous. They do have an alternative. They've got a great alternative. They don't want to talk about it because it doesn't support their cause. Their land, who knows what it's going to cost them to run the utilities by the time they get done. Probably double the value or double the cost of their acquisition. We are going to sue them also because we're convinced that there's covenants to keep the residential property from being sold commercial. And we will uh, be pursuing legal remedies. Thank you for your time. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Edwards and I'm a therapist at the Refuge Center. When listening to the concerns about building on Long Lane, I hear quite a bit of fear. Fear of the unknown, fear of the stigma, fear of aesthetics, and just fear. Fear is defined as an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain or threat. When we are fearful, we become stagnant, and it can become paralyzing and keep us from moving forward and growing. What would Williamson County be be like if the leaders did not move forward because of their fears. I imagine it would not be the community that we are today. I will say that fear is a powerful emotion, an emotion that makes us reactive instead of responsive. My hope is that when considering the annexation on Long Lane, the response comes from a, comes from a place of courage and not fear. Thank you. Hello, I'm Sarah Oglesby and I live at 1001 Beeman Drive in Franklin. I'm also in Ladd Park. I want to say thank you to Ann Peterson for your support of this in terms of realizing that this doesn't just fit where it's, where it's intended to be. Um, we would like to keep Long Lane residential. This has nothing to do with mental health 
for me personally and for many others in Ladd Park that I have spoken with. Um, we are opposed to any office or commercial development on this particular property on Long Lane. We did not move into a mixed use development area. We moved into a residential area. Um, we would like to see smart choices for smart growth. And I ask that you come and visit the site in person before casting your vote on this issue. And ask yourself if this makes sense. If you were to live where Scott lives or Joey lives or the rest of us, and to wake up each morning or go to bed each night and have to look at a commercial or business facility, is that something that you would go purchase a home next to or in front of or beside? Um, because we moved into a residential area and we would like for it to remain residential and we appreciate your thought and consideration on this. So we ask that you vote against this. Thank you. My name is Megan Peake. I live at 1056 Memorial Drive. Um, I'm also a Christian. I understand the need for a refuge center. My brother is an addict. Every day we get that phone call that, you know, we don't know what's coming on the other end of the line. And um, the point is we're not against a refuge center. We understand the importance of a refuge center. We're arguing the location of the refuge center. And that's a big difference. There are other locations that are possible that are not literally in people's backyards. Um, the people on this side of the room don't live on that map. I agree with Sarah that before you cast your vote to actually come out and see the area yourself in person. Again, we're not afraid of change, but it has to be smart change. The safety of the hillside after the new school is built on Gosey Hill. The school will be built in January. This also sets a precedence for other commercial properties to be placed in the middle of a residential property. The last point, again, about the sewage. It's a very expensive option, and I don't know how your donors would feel about spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on a sewage line. Imagine that money be used on your patients. Thank you. Yes, Greg Ross again. I know it does sound like those who are opposed are against the refuge center and their cause, but this is not true. As it has, it, as it has been said by the last couple of people, their cause is worthy. It is most beneficial to many, many people. However, I would like to leave you with this. We have all invested our life savings into our beautiful homes and properties with the belief that this is where we are going to retire, surrounded by trees, greenery, and nature. There is a reason we chose this subdivision. Now this dream is being threatened. We realize that naturally, as time went on, as is now evidenced that homes would be built around us and in the area. It's natural progression, especially with the ever-growing population in this area. But we never could have expected that we would have to share our property line with the 15,000 square foot building and parking lot. It may look or resemble a residence, but it's going to have a parking lot and is going to be three, four times larger than our houses. These houses range from 3,000 to 5,000 square feet. These, this will be a 15,000 square foot building, a building with 50 counseling offices and more than 30 clients coming here every hour. We could have spent a lot less money and lived next to a commercial building, but we did not. We chose this property intentionally for its beauty and character, not to have the adjacent lot be rezoned commercial and decreasing our quality of life. And I do so appreciate hearing our, what we had to say and giving us your consideration. We may very much appreciate that. Thank you. I 
How you doing? Um, my name is Matt Toy. I live at 3003 Braintree Road in, in Franklin. Um, I just want to say, in January 2nd, uh, in the Tennessee, and uh, it was outlined that Mayor Moore, uh, his top five initiatives for Williamson County, number one of the five was mental health. Um, and, you know, that's what, that's what the Refuge Center does. And I, I'm excited about this because I think that this expands, you know, the, the reach of, of the Refuge Center. I do marketing uh, down in Nashville. And, you know, this as a whole has been pretty cool because so many more people are knowing about the Refuge Center that, that never would have before. And although the, the hard frustration of all this is not fun, um, it's pretty neat to know that so many more people are going to know about mental health they may never have known about mental health and know a place to go to receive mental health um, because, of, because of these conversations. And so it gets me excited. I think it gets these people excited about what this can be here in a few years when uh, this is built. Because if you all vote, we can make a bigger impact in, in Franklin and ultimately you know, make a better life for these people in Franklin. So thank you for your time. Good evening. I'm Linda Crockett. I live at 805 West End Circle in Franklin, Tennessee. Um, this is what I consider my town, too. I'm eight generations of Williamson County and um, actually lived on the land where the Cool Springs Galleria was built. It was passed down through the eight generations of my family. I don't begrudge this growth because today we all enjoy the luxury of having close, nice, office space, shopping space, entertainment space. Change is gonna happen and we just need to embrace it and do it with the best direction we can to make it fit um, into the community as well as working, founding Bridges Domestic Violence Center. I've worked in direct collaboration with Amy Alexander and the Refuge Center for the last 10 years. And with the 13,000 calls we get for help a year that most of them are referred to the Refuge Center to deal with the issues they're going through. So I value the organization. I have embraced change, and I wish others in our community could too. Good evening. Hey, it's Sarah Oglesby again. As a former fundraiser, I had a question. Um, Y'all have to raise six million dollars to build the i'm sorry no we're not we're not asking questions of the audience this is comments to us okay if you have any questions for the commissioner or comments okay well the then i'll just make a, a blanket us. statement okay. um as a lad park resident and um on the opposing side um i would love to see all of us come together and us all fundraise together for the refuge center and help them find a home so I'd love for us to all come together and help them find a home that's just not in a residential area. So maybe we can all work together to help them find their permanent home, not on Long Lane. Thanks. Hello, my name is Megan Ammon. I actually live in Nolansville, so I don't live um, in Franklin. Um, but I am a representative of the general contractor for this project, um, DeAngelis Diamond Construction, and that is not why I'm here today, though. Um, I'm here because I wish that I had had a refuge center when I was growing up in my community because I think it would have saved me a lot of hurt and pain um, in my later years and while I was in college. Um, I suffered from depression and an eating disorder. And unfortunately, I didn't have a place like the Refuge Center to go to in my community. And I think that if I had had somewhere close by, I would have sought help earlier and I would have been able to address those issues earlier instead of going through the years that I did um, in the pain that I was in. So. I'm super thankful for the work that they do. And I would um, also like to remind you, we have heard from people who live in that community who are in support of the Refuge Center. And also a community member um, of the neighborhood that the Refuge Center is a neighbor to right now, who is also in support of the Refuge Center. So um, 
I just really am so passionate about this organization, and I think, um, you know, it's going to be a great asset to the community, whether they know it now or not. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Chris Hamilton. I reside at 700 Cool Springs Boulevard in Franklin, and I support the Refuge Center. I'm the president and CEO of one of Franklin's corporate citizens, Red Collar Pet Foods. Red Collar is a former division of Mars Pet Care, which I'm sure you're familiar with, and a national employer with a global reach and headquarters right here in Franklin. When I sold the division from Mars and went with the transaction, I had the choice of many locations across the U.S. We have many facilities, many of which are in fantastic locations as well. However, I ended up making the choice to stay here, right here in Franklin, to build our business. We have ambitious plans to grow our sales to over a billion dollars and employ more people right here in our community. And with a thriving community like Franklin, a growing skilled workforce, and a compassionate community that our associates want to move to and grow with, we plan to keep this as our home and invest for the long term. As a longtime employee living and working in Williamson County, and the city of Franklin is a very special place for me personally. However, not, that's not what I want to say today to you. I also give back to our community. I'm a past board member of the Pedigree Foundation and a current board member of the Refuge Center for Counseling. I believe it's important for our community members to take an active interest in shaping the type of city that we want Franklin to be and where our families and businesses can be part of and contribute to. Our associates tell me they want to be part of a compassionate, caring community that helps those in our area who are struggling and need help. Therefore, I support the Refuge Center's request to annex and rezone the property located on Long Lane. I personally have been involved in the extensive and exhaustive search the Refuge Center has conducted, looking for property in Franklin, and the search predates me, as you heard already tonight. The Refuge has found a property consistent with the city's long-range plan and has, a, has, and has a design that is sensitive to neighbors. Please support the request. Supporting the health and well-being of our residents and the surrounding communities must include providing much-needed services for their mental health. By supporting the Refuge Center in their bid to build a true refuge from the storm, you are helping to make that happen. And I, too, do encourage you to come out and see the property. Just make sure you take precautions against the chiggers. I have experience with those, and you don't want to have any of that. So I request the Planning Commission vote for approval of this project. Thank you. Hello, I'm Paula Flint. I live at 145 uh, Herald Court in Ladd Park, and I vote no, not because of what you all do, but I am just horse to the barn after work, and I can, it, the traffic is already crazy. Um, it is very dangerous out there. The turns are extremely sharp. Um, we drive it every day, we know it, and it's still very difficult out there driving. Um, so many things that they've talked about. Money, there's a lot of area. There's a lot of different places. Um, it's unfortunate. Uh, we already have ovations, Carruthers. It's going to even be more busy. If they're, if they're needing, if they've outgrown their space in Forest Crossing, then how many more are going to be coming every hour, every day? Um, I think it's too much on top of a school, um, more houses being built, um, ovations, the parks. There, it's not end. It's just, it's not ending. I'm not afraid of change, but it is a residential area. It's, it's. I vote no. That's all I can say. Thank you. All right. Any other comments? Okay. All right. See you none other than uh, I will enter. Well, I'm sorry. Let's have the, the uh, applicant, please. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, my name is Greg Gamble. I'm representing the applicant, the Refuge Center, who's requesting annexation of this property to the city of Franklin. Um, and we ask for your support and recommendation to, to BOMA for this annexation. Um, if I can turn your attention to the second page that's in the 11 by 17. Um, this property is within the urban growth boundary of Franklin. It has been planned for some time for consideration to be annexed into the city of Franklin. Uh, that request just hasn't been made yet until today. 
We have researched um, with the title attorney, the codes, covenants, deeds, restrictions that have been referred to by the neighbors, and there is nothing recorded at Williamson County that we've been able to find. I've called the Register of Deeds office myself and asked for the covenants and restrictions, and uh, there aren't any that are recorded for this piece of property. Um, I don't know if there were past agreements um, with previous landowners, but the current landowner is not aware of, of, of a document that would have been a covenant uh, on the property. So um, our title attorney uh, stands by that uh, nothing has been recorded with the county regarding uh, the covenants of the property or any deed restrictions. Um, the first image that you'll see here is the land use plan, Envision Franklin, it calls for regional commerce. This is one layer of Envision Franklin. The second graphic that you see here, this is the height map. And the height map shows this property potential of six stories. These are two layers in Envision Franklin. What you're missing are all of the other layers in Envision Franklin. The layers in Envision Franklin that require compatibility, the layers that require transition, the layers <laughs> that require when a use is adjacent to, uh, well, let's say an office use, adjacent to a residential use, you have to design with compatibility. In our rezoning request, we are specifically asking for a PUD so that our commitments for the Refuge Center, developed out under an office base zone, our commitments that are controlled by the Planning Commission and controlled by the Board and Mayor and Aldermen. Our setbacks, our height, form, character, mass, scale, all the things that Envision Franklin talks about in other layers in addition to regional commerce and height. Now why would regional commerce be appropriate in this particular location? Why was that considered in Envision Franklin? And I, I think I know the answer. And if you'll turn to the next page here, this map shows Long Lane going from Carruthers Parkway over the interstate to Berry Farms. It's been identified in our major thoroughfare plan as a collector road. Collector roads will one day be three lanes. I don't know when Long Lane will be three lanes, but not any time in the very near future. But the future collector road is being designed as a three lane section, fly over I-65. Ladd Park has 1,200 residential homes. Using our traffic generation and, and create when you create traffic reports, that's 10 trips per house per day. That's 12,000 trips. That doesn't even take into consideration what's north of Ladd Park. There are approximately 12, uh, 2,400 homes that are along Carruthers Parkway, so 24,000 trips. Long Lane is transforming. Yes, it used to be more of a local street, Compatible with single family, but its future is changing. This map shows you the future extension of Carruthers Parkway headed south and how Goose Creek extension will come across creating an intersection. That area is currently outside of the city's urban growth boundary. Over the next few months, we'll be bringing forward to you discussions about annexation of this property. The property owners have already filed requests for these land here to be annexed. So this is an area in transition. It will involve a larger conversation, a bigger conversation about future planning. Now, as it relates to the property that the Refuge Center is requesting, it's, it's the first piece, but it doesn't get rid of the requirements of Envision Franklin or the zoning ordinance to design with compatibility. So requesting your support of annexation and with the next discussions we'll talk about the zoning, the constraints of the PUD, and how this property can and will be designed with compatibility to the adjacent neighbors. Thank you. All right, thank you. So I will entertain a motion relative to annexation. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Yes. Ms. Peterson? Uh, I, I, I want to say uh, that it was mentioned that uh, earlier in, in the discussions uh, at some of the other meetings, I, I mentioned s something about a, 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 mis a, a presentation 
that did not show everything about this property. And if you still have this on page three of the uh, comments that Mr. Gamble was making, if you notice here, there's an HHO that is uh, height overlay for hillsides that covers not only half of this site, but a great deal of the other part there. That would not be appropriate for um, the the types of buildings that we're talking about here. You know, the the big uh, the the uh, like the six foot tall, a six story tall building and things like that. So, what I had brought to the attention when we first started looking at this was that that on the presentation that we were showed that first time, it left out all of that, all of that that was in the, uh, um, the overlay, the hillside overlay there. And so, as I say, if you look at that with the corridor building height map, that, that part would not work with some of the things that, that are just shown in the big picture of, um, <coughs> of uh, the, uh, this area uh, there. And so, um, that is, that is one of the things that I wanted to say. The other thing is that um, there is no, there, there have been many people who have uh, talked about the worthiness of the refuge. Uh, I guess the difficulty I have is with this location and also the fact that, you know, I drove out on Long Lane again yesterday. It, 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 it has a, a a lot of areas where it doesn't fit like, uh, you know, Berry Farms or anything like that. The, the, the topography there is, is completely different and also it makes um, a, a street there not just need three lanes instead of two or something like that. It, there's a great deal of hill, steepness um, and there are blind spots there. And I also did look to see where they were talking about the, I mean, where not they, but where the county is talking about the new school out here also. It's, it's very close to this area. So as I say, my difficulty is that um, this, this does not seem the appropriate area. And of course, right now we're just talking about annexation. The other two, the two out of the four are, are the ones that uh, kind of show the great concerns that I have. Okay, all right, any other comments? All right, seeing none, all in favor of the um, vote for annexation, say aye. 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 Opposed? Say no. Motion passes. So now we move to item number 30, which is resolution, I'm sorry, consideration of ordinance 2019-09 an ordinance to zone seven acres to general, several, excuse me, to zone seven acres, general office district, hillside, hilltop overlay, Goose Creek character area overlay 4D, and the conventional standard for the property located south of Long Lane and east of the Ag Center. Staff? Thanks, I know that was a mouthful. That was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> the requested zoning for this parcel is General Office, GO. A separate resolution accompanies this rezoning request for the corresponding development plan. As you well may know, in considering zoning, staff looks to Envision Franklin for guidance. Envision Franklin places this area into two separate design concepts, as Greg has shown on his maps. The developable portions of the site are in the regional commerce design concept. To quote Envision Franklin, the regional commerce design concept contains high intensity activity centers that attract large number of people and employers from both within and outside the city. These areas include major employment and revenue generators that are a valuable community resource. Also, regional commerce should transition in intensity and scale across this design concept. Higher intensity uses should be located closer to the I-65 interchanges and major thoroughfares with less intensive uses transitioning to established residential areas. Um, 
The regional commerce design concept was applied to this area based on the City of Franklin's Capital Improvement Plan for Roadway Improvements. That's also in your handout there. As part of a future TIP project, Carruthers Parkway and Paytonsville Road will be extended and Long Lane will be improved with a flyover over I-65. These future roadway improvements will be supportive of more intensive uses with appropriate transitions to the existing neighborhoods and residences to this area. The other design concept for this property is conservation. A portion of the site contains hillsides with slopes exceeding 14%. This area was designated on previous planning efforts conducted by the City of Franklin as worthy of preservation as part of the Hillside Protection Overlay, HHO. Staff feels that zoning this property GEO with Hillside Overlay meets the goals of Envision Franklin to protect the hillside and provide a transition to existing neighborhoods. The Associated Development Plan will also highlight these transitions, therefore staff, staff is recommending approval to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen for the rezoning. Okay, thank you. All right, anyone in the audience who wants to speak to this item, if you'll come forward. Rule, same rules still apply. Again, this is, I guess, regarding more of the zoning issue of rezoning the property from residential to potential office use. And I just want to make this point again that the entire area right now is in the county. It is residential property right now that does have a private covenant that we have a copy of for any of you guys that want to see it um, for all the parcels within the Blanche Moss subdivision. Um, that being said, uh, Alderman Peterson keeps bringing up the fact that, and again, you guys have the map, so the reality of it is that this property um, is not just going to be an opportunity for the folks who are going to get um, punished by the the changing of this to a, a piece of commercial property or office or whatever you want to name it the reason it's gonna be more punishing for these people in particular is that they have that same overlay and those same constrictions within their property so when you come down to trying to sell commercial real estate or acreage in that form they're gonna be under the same constraints that this property is and they're not gonna have seven to ten acres that they currently have to sell residential um, and Adamantly, we all know that their property is worth a whole lot more as a residential neighborhood, and changing this zoning is going to affect their property value. So we appreciate your time. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? All right, seeing none, then I will enter. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, come forward, please. And then we'll talk to the. All right, it's Dwayne Allison again. Thank you for hearing me. So yeah, this is feeling a little bit like a David and Goliath situation here. Uh, right now, it's a low density area. Uh, you know, the the uh, estate properties there that have been established there for many years are kind of coming up against, you know, a, a large organization, a lot of employees that are here tonight and so forth. And uh, so you know, we kind of have to put ourselves at your at your you know highest judgment here for this, and just ask you that you know preserve our neighborhood. Um, and this, you know, aesthetically and logistically, just it's going to be a real problem for, for those who, who live there. And, and I would just say, you know, to those that, uh, you know, would kind of impose this on us, that it's, it's you know, it's really against our will. And it does feel, you know, a, a bit violated, you know, feel a little bit violated here that, you know, that, that the, the, the request of the, of the neighbors are being kind of over, overlooked and over, overstepped here by, by some, uh, you know, by the development, I guess you'd say. So with that being said, I just want to thank you again for hearing us. All right. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Just a reminder that uh, this is um, recommendations on our part that will go from here to the uh, Board of Mayor and Aldermen. So um, just to keep that in mind, this is not a final approval on our part for these items. Hi, again, uh, Greg Gamble representing the applicant. And... We spent quite a bit of time talking with staff about what base zone would be the most appropriate. SDX, general commercial, general office. General office actually has the greatest amount of constraint, the fewest uses permitted on this property. Um, we also uh, agree with the discussion at the workshop that there needed to be more control. 
So in addition to general office zoning, the PUD will limit the height to two stories maximum. We'll establish setbacks that are greater than the required, so 80 foot front setback off of Long Lane, and that's in the, in the PUD. Tree preservation buffers along the property boundaries where trees are existing now, and additional landscape buffers where those need to be supplemented. We mentioned earlier that traffic study wasn't required for the use, didn't meet the threshold. We did one anyways, wanted to understand safety issues, but also the impact to Long Lane. A turn lane was not required. The sight distances from our exit are sufficient. However, the refuge center's listening and heard that that was a concern that the community had about having to stop on Long Lane if somebody was trying to make a right turn. So they are committing to installing that right turn lane and that is also in the PUD and a commitment that will track with the zoning of the property from general commercial. Another commitment is that there will be no overnight stays, never been a plan to, but that's gonna be a commitment in this PUD, no overnight stays, no pharmaceutical sales. Again, was never a part of the plan, but is a commitment that will be tracked with this PUD. So uh, we ask for your support uh, and recommendation of support to BOMA for this uh, rezoning. Thank you. All right, I will entertain a motion. Recommend approval to the Board of Mayor and Alderman. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any discussion? All right, seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. I have number 31, consideration of resolution 2019-29 a resolution a approving a development plan for the Refuge Center for Counseling PUD subdivision for the property located south of Long Lane and east of the Ag Center. Staff? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. As discussed with the last item, Envision Franklin identifies two design concepts for the site with the key goals for this property to transition in intensity and to protect the natural features. The development plan will regulate the building form, placement on site, and overall access to the site. The development plan and general office zoning complies with Envision Franklin by one, providing the least intensive commercial zoning on this site, two, providing an office building with residential design features and scale, three, clustering all development on the portions of the lot under the regional commerce design concept, four, preserving the portion on the lot covered by conservation design concept, and five, providing an additional landscape screen and compatible setbacks along Long Lane to mitigate the transition of uses from single family residential to an office use on this site. For those reasons, staff would recommend approval with conditions to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. All right, um, I'm opening the podium for anybody again that wants to speak to this item. Again, I'll keep it brief. I think that the, the hinging remark on a lot of these is that Envision Franklin supports this um, annexation and rezoning, but I just want to make it clear that we're trying to convey to the board that we think there's a miscalculation within Envision Franklin on this particular piece of property. Uh, we think that the board needs to revisit that. Um, I think to do something courageous for everyone in this room would be for you guys to say, hey, we maybe need to look at this again before pushing it forward to the BOMA folks to make a final decision because I don't think we've explored that nearly enough. Um, that all being said, if Envision Franklin is, is the Bible or what we're gonna go by, then this particular piece of property that Mr. Gregg, one of your former employees has mentioned, um, is actually potentially gonna be annexed that he's talking about that is not within Envision Franklin. So my expectation would be that that would be denied when you guys see that presented to you guys as well. Thank you. Scott Myers again, 4322 Long Lane, directly across the street from the new proposed site. We're going to do everything we can to oppose this. We think it's a common sense thing to do. We hope BOMA sees that it is a common sense thing to deny the access to this property and encourage the Refuge Center to use the property that's been made available to them on Liberty Pike that provides all the needed services safe roads, turn lanes, 
uh, stop lights, uh, traffic lights, uh, street lights, and believe it or not, they even have a sidewalk there to make it extremely easy to access the proposed property or available property on Liberty Pike. And there is public transportation already. Now there's a stony ditch, there's an unsafe drive. If this happens to go through, I pray to God that you all will keep an eye on our property and help us preserve our residents and the lifestyle that we've enjoyed for 20 years. All right, anyone else? Okay, this is uh, someone representing the applicant. Hello, my name is Greg Gamble and appreciate the opportunity to uh, talk with you about some refinements that we've made under plan since we uh, last met um, with the joint conceptual workshop. Um, if you wouldn't mind referring to page number four in the 11 by 17, this is the development plan. We've just simply added color so that uh, there are certain key elements of it here that uh, will stand out to you and you'll recognize this from our joint conceptual workshop. One issue that we heard at the joint conceptual workshop is regarding our parking area. We understand that parking lot lights can certainly be a nuisance especially to neighbors, especially in the evening. We want to make sure that we um, accommodate that concern as much as we possibly can, and we're committing to dark sky lighting in the parking lot so that it's full cutoff lighting. It only illuminates the ground, does not illuminate. You can't see it from when you're across the field. Um, and that's an important aspect of this. But in addition to that, along Long Lane, along our, on, along our uh, parking lot edge there, there really aren't a lot of trees buffering that area. So you'll see in our development plan that we've submitted that we're committing to landscaping and creating an evergreen buffer along the entire edge of the parking lot. Now there is a code requirement for that, but we're going to be buffering, uh, enhancing that um, buffer area significantly. Uh, there were also some questions regarding distances um, to the south. How far is the proposed building to the adjacent neighbor to the south? That's a total distance of 160 foot of separation. To the north, we have an 80-foot setback from the building to Long Lane. The adjacent neighbor to the north's building is 200 feet. So we have a total distance of about, uh, I think the, the right of way for Long Lane here is about 50 feet in width. So um, just over 300 feet separation from the building to building. Um, we believe that we have designed this master plan, the building, in concert with and with compatibility to a residential form, residential uh, uh, neighbors that are across the street. And uh, happy to answer any questions that you may have and uh, ask that you uh, recommend support of the development plan. Thank you. <coughs> okay. I will entertain a motion. Second. Moved and seconded. <coughs> any discussion on this item? All right, seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you. All right, let's move on to item number 32, consideration ordinance 2019-07, in order to rezone 14.88 acres from SDX to SDX 2.02 district. We'll uh, wait a minute while the crowd Exits. Can we turn the air on while? Man. <laughs> Yeah, it will be. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll get back at it. So this is ordinance 2019-07, an ordinance to rezone 14.88 acres from specific development variety to specific development variety SDX 
2.02 with a property located at the northeast corner of Murfrees Murfreesboro Road and Chester Stevens Court, the Silver Grace PUD subdivision. Right, Staff? Good, good evening, Mr. Chair, uh, members of the commission. Uh, the applicant is requesting a rezoning of 14.88 acres from specific development variety uh, district to specific development variety district uh, with a uh, density of 2.02 .02 and units per acre and 95,618 square feet of um, non-residential use. Um, the subject property is in the Silver Grace PUD subdivision, which was approved in 2009. Uh, the zoning is being updated to accurately reflect the assisted living facility as, institution, as an institutional use rather than a residential use. Um, an addition of assisted living space and to establish a residential density. Uh, the total residential unit count remains the same in that three single family lots uh, are being reassigned as cottage units within the development plan. Uh, but this rezoning, uh, or with this rezoning, the proposed additional square footage uh, for the expansion of the uh, assisted living facility is internal to the site. Uh, and it is supported as a use in Envision Franklin's multifamily residential design concept. Uh, so with that, staff recommends uh, approval to the Board of Mayor and Alderman for this rezoning. Uh, is there anyone in the audience other than the applicant who wants to speak to this item? Okay, we'll move from the last hour and a half. We're pretty good listeners. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then we will move to uh, someone representing the applicant themselves. owner of uh, the Fountains of Franklin, happy to be here. Uh, this is a continuation of the project and uh, we concur with staff comments and just uh, recommend that this get approved and I'll be glad to answer any questions. Okay, then I will entertain a motion. Move for approval. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Item number 33. Resolution 2019-28, a resolution approving a revised development plan for Silver Grace PUD subdivision. Staff? Yes, Mr. Chair, the applicant is requesting a revised development plan for the Silver Grace PUD subdivision, or the Fountains of Franklin, uh, which is 14.88 acres. Uh, the existing development plan was approved in 2009. Uh, the applicant uh, was also requesting the, the rezoning of the site to re accurately reflect uh, the assisted living facility as an institutional use rather than a residential use. Um, also in addition of memory care uh, square footage and to establish a residential density. Uh, the total residential unit count again included in this revision remains the same. However, three single family lots that front Chester Stevens Court are being reassigned as cottage units within the development. Uh, the applicant is also proposing a memory care uh, facility expansion to the main facility on the campus. Uh, this expansion is, again, internal to the site and is supported as a use within Envision Franklin's multifamily residential uh, design concept. Uh, and with that, staff recommends approval of the development plan revision to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. Okay, thank you. Anyone uh, in the audience other than the applicant want to speak? <coughs> All right, is there someone representing the applicant? I am still Gary Keckley, <laughs> and it's still good to be here with you. I thought you looked familiar. Yes, I'll uh, be glad to answer any questions about this. Okay, uh, do I have a motion? Move for approval with staff condition. Second. Moved and seconded, any discussion? All right, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, ayes have it. Item number 34, consideration ordinance 2019-05, an ordinance to rezone 4.82 acres from light industrial to neighborhood commercial, I'm sorry, from light industrial and neighborhood commercial to general commercial for the property located at the Northwest Quadrant of Downs Boulevard and Columbia Avenue. Staff? Yes, thank you. This property is located at the Northwest corner of the intersection of Downs Boulevard and Columbia Avenue. The current zoning for these parcels is GC, LI and NC. The requested zoning for these parcels is to combine all of those into GC. GC and its associated uses are supported by the design concept for this area, which is neighborhood mixed use. Therefore, staff recommends approval for this rezoning. Okay, anyone other than the audience, other than the audience, <laughs> other than the applicant, want to speak on this item? All right, is there someone representing the applicant? Mark Spaulding with Gresham Smith. 
I represent the owner. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to happy to answer those. Okay, thank you. I will entertain a motion. Move for approval from Board Mayor and Alderman. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any discussion? All right, seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Ordinance 2019-08, an ordinance to rezone 0 0.58 acres from civic institutional to general commercial for the property located at 420 Bridge Street. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The applicant is requesting to rezone the property at 420 Bridge Street from civic institutional to general commercial. Uh, the Fifth Avenue North design concept, as outlined in the Envision Franklin Land Use Plan, supports the proposed zoning uh, as GC would allow for local commercial uses, professional and transitional offices, to extend the vibrant downtown core to this established corridor. Uh, the adjacent property on the corner of Bridge Street and Fifth Avenue North is already zoned general commercial. Uh, no corresponding site plan or development plan for the property has been submitted at this time. And as a project consideration, a plan with the assistance of a design professional um, to change the existing occupancy type uh, to the intended use um, there may be uh, some work to be done to bring the building into compliance for existing or new uses. Thank you. Anyone in the audience other than the applicant want to speak to this? All right, is there someone representing the applicant? <coughs> Hi, I'm Arthur Constantine, and uh, we live in Williamson County, 900 Briarwood Crest, and I just thank uh, you all for your consideration of, of this uh, request okay thank you um i will entertain a motion move for approval second moved and seconded any discussion all right all in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed Ayes have it item 36 ordinance 2019-10 ordinance to rezone 22.04 acres from general commercial to specific development variety 21.8 district and rezone 5.15 acres from general commercial to civic institutional for the properties located south of McEwen Drive and west of Carruthers Parkway. Staff. Yes, thank you. As stated in the title, this property, this property is currently two tracks um, and the smaller of the two tracks is intended to be used as part of a PUD development plan requirement for parkland dedication and tree canopy preservation, which is why it's asking for CI zoning. For the portion of the development zone, SDX, Envision Franklin recommends a regional commerce design concept. <coughs> the proposed mix of uses as outlined in the Orium PUD development plan that will be following this rezoning request meet the intent of the regional commerce design concept by providing activated streetscapes and comprehensive site planning. Therefore, staff recommends approval to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. All right, anyone in the audience other than the applicant want to speak to this? Okay, is there someone representing the applicant? Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, uh, Commissioners. Alan Thompson with Reagan Smith and Associates here on behalf of our client, uh, South Star. Um, we're in full agreement with conditions of approval and be happy to answer any questions. All right, I will entertain a motion. Move for approval. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Item number 37, a resolution approving a development plan for REM PUD subdivision with two modifications of standard requests, one being roof forms, the second being retaining wall materials. Staff? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Envision Franklin recommends a regional commerce design concept for this parcel. The intent of regional commerce is to contain high intensity activity centers that attract large number of people and employers from both within and outside the city. These areas include major employment and revenue generators that are valuable community resources. The intended building layout maximizes the building frontage on the internal road in a matter like what was designed for the Ovation PUD subdivision immediately to the east and Apex Village PUD subdivision to the northeast of the site. The uses, which include attached residential, office, and hotel, help to further an integrated mixed-use design node from I-65 to Carruthers along East McEwen Drive. The design intent of this development complements the existing and planned built environment for the area. The development plan is intended to transition in building height, massing, and intensity of uses from the north at East McEwen Drive to the south, where the hillside overlay is, 
and from the east of Carruthers Parkway to the west, which is Tower Circle. The development uses a series of shielded parking, pedestrian plazas and open spaces, and building heights to emphasize the change in grade on this site. A total of 480 attached residential dwelling units are proposed with this development. These units are dispersed in four separate buildings clustered in the southwest quadrant of the site. The intent of Envision Franklin is met with the conceptual massing elevations and overall site layout as presented with the development plan. Massing elevations are included with the development plan. Exact building elevations will be approved at the site plan level but are expected to meet this section of Envision Franklin. The first modification to standards is for roof form. The City of Franklin Zoning Ordinance 5.3.5 EI specifies that attached residential structures shall incorporate roof pitches between 3 and 12 and 12 to 12 as a pitch. The applicant has requested all residential structures have flat roofs to achieve an urban form consistent with the building heights proposed in this development. Staff finds that flat roofs are appropriate in this context of the development and adjacent developments. Therefore, staff recommends approval of modification of standards number one. Modification of standards number two was retaining wall materials. However, the applicant has asked that this item be withdrawn, so we will not be voting on that one. Um, and now Jimmy has some project considerations that he'd like to talk about. Thank you, Amy. The transportation and techn technical street standards and the zoning orders both require that lanes used for turning movements within intersections shall maintain a minimum level of service D. With the continued development and redevelopment of the Cool Springs area and an above average growth factor, we will see impacts to our traffic network. The already approved background traffic and proposed added density on this property will result in a failed level of service at the McEwen Drive and I-65 interchange and the McEwen Drive and Carruthers Parkway intersection during the AM and PM peak hour. This devel the developer is still required to make substantial improvements to the network and that will aid in, the re in reducing future delay. These improvements are highlighted in their development plan submittal. Additionally, uh, engineer staff will be bringing forward a proposal to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen for a detailed traffic modeling study of the Cool Springs area. The goal of this study will be to provide an updated outlook on traffic in the area as well as potential solutions to improve traffic, traffic operations and safety. Overall, staff does recommend approval with conditions of this development plan to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. Is there anyone in the audience other than the applicant that wants to speak to this? Okay, is there someone representing the applicant? Good evening again. Alan Thompson with Reagan Smith on behalf of our client, South Star. Uh, we agree with staff comments and conditions of approval and happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. I'll entertain a motion. Move with staff conditions. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any discussion? All right, seeing none, then all in favor say aye. There's a modification. I'm sorry? Modification. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I thought you were just trying to scare me. All right. So we have a main motion. So let's uh, start with modification number one. Um, it's only one. Well, do we have to vote to withdraw it? No, it's two, right? No, it's just one. So it's been withdrawn. We'll just know. Okay. Then we'll, we have one modification standard requested. I move to, uh, oh, jeez, I just had, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. The staff, uh, staff has um, placed one modification of standard in the staff. I move to approve that modification of standard. Second. Okay, so we have um, an amendment to the main motion. Is there uh, any questions? All right, all in favor of the amendment to the main motion relative to roof forms being allowed to be flat in this area, or low slope as it probably should be really said. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. All right, we're back to the main motion, unless the city attorney wants to yell at me again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <I see. laughs> okay. You've seen yelling. All right. I'll trust the city administrator. 
Um, then we'll back to the main motion as amended. Any other discussion on the main motion as amended? All right, seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. All right, then we are at item number 44, resolution 2019-26, a resolution approving an amendment to the bylaws, Municipal Planning Commission bylaws regarding the months during which performance and maintenance agreements and sureties for landscaping shall be released, reduced, or extended. Staff? This bylaws amendment basically um, exchanges, adds September to allow to release um, landscape sureties and it removes November. So it basically just switches them out. This has to do with when we change the schedule to consolidate the November and December meetings into one. This works much better to be able to still keep the same number of landscape inspections and uh, number of months the same. All right, thank Paula you. Paula really wanted to be here to talk about this, <laughs> but we I'm, told her she, sure. she could go home. I'm sure she did. <laughs> If you want to, we can uh, uh, postpone it on her behalf. I don't think so. Like <laughs> <laughs> All right, then I will uh, consider a motion. Move for approval. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Did you get that second, Elaine? Okay, we'll let Marsha take that one. You're already on the on the docket, I think, tonight. Okay. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Do I have a um, recommendation for adjournment? I move. Second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 We're adjourned. Thank you.